We're going to talk a little bit about hip arthritis. We're going to talk about some of the basics of hip replacement, some of the specialized procedures such as an anterior approach hip replacement. Then we're going to get into some robotic assistance through an anterior approach. So we're really talking about cutting edge technology and, and we're proud of that. So the hip's a little different than the knee. Knee's a hinge. Uh, the hip is a ball and socket. There's a femoral head right here, sits in the socket, and there's cartilage on both sides. So there's 70 million people in the United States have some sort of arthritis, okay? So it's a widespread epidemic. You know, we're, we're behind in cartilage restoration procedures. Maybe in 100 years we'll figure out how to preserve that cartilage longer. But now we're looking at when the cartilage is worn off and you're rubbing bone on bone, well, then you look towards joint replacement. So osteoarthritis is the most common. That's the wear and tear type of arthritis. You wear the cartilage down, well, your body responds when you wear that cartilage down by forming more bone. And those are bone spurs. It's all part of arthritis. There's another type of arthritis called inflammatory arthritis. And that affects your whole body. Your body kind of attacks itself and it affects multiple joints. And rheumatoid arthritis is the most common type of inflammatory arthritis. So what's causing your pain? A healthy hip, well, this cartilage here, it kind of looks like cue ball. It's white or the end of a chicken bone. A diseased hip or an arthritic hip, I tell the patients, well, you got potholes. That cartilage is worn down. It's kind of like driving on square tires. It's, just, it's not going to work as well. So patients that come in with hip pain, well, you see that they'll take short strides, okay? And we call that an antalgic gait. It means a painful gait. Um, they find it difficult to perform just regular activities. Some people can't tie their shoes. They can't bend over. Because tying your shoes, you're bending at the hip. They'll often, well, they'll, they'll want to sit around. They don't want to go to the store because they can only walk so far. You may feel like one of the legs is shorter than the other two. What happens is you start to wear that cartilage down, well, the leg does become shorter. And it can throw your gait off. Uh, patients with hip arthritis classically will complain of pain in the groin region. Can complain of some thigh pain and even buttocks pain. Most of the time it's kind of right in the front in the groin. So we ask our patients on a scale of one to 10, describe your pain. You know, 10's ten, childbirth, and so none of the guys have 10. <laughs> Only one did, that's a long story. Um, you know, and, and there's non-operative treatment. We always start with a non-operative treatment and we work our way up to operative treatment. Generally when the patients are at about a 7 on a scale of 10 and they failed the conservative measures, the anti-inflammatories, injections, you know, then we talk about surgery. We want to keep our patients active. When you start sitting around, that's when things happen. We want to keep you going. So what are the options? Well, there's the analgesics, and that's either Motrin, Aleve, you know, every company's got them, Mobix, Celebrex, there's Tylenol out there, and there's narcotics. Well, we, we try to s steer away from the narcotics, you know, only if necessary. Um, there's injections. Well, there's steroid injections that can be put in the hip, and you could have those every four months. And they may last you a year, or they may last you a couple days. The first one generally lasts the longest. So that's what I tell the patients. Hyaluronic acid, we use it occasionally. Insurance companies don't like to pay for it for hip injections. Knees, they will. Hips, they don't want to. There's water therapy. Well, hot packs, cold packs, exercise and physical therapy. We talk to all our patients about that. For every pound you're overweight, say I'm 25 pounds overweight, which I am, it's 100 pounds of extra force with each step. So one pound overweight, four pounds extra stress on your joint when you're walking. So we send a lot of our patients to dietitians. Uh, we're lucky enough that ETMC has an aquatic therapy center. The lady that teaches is great. So we send a lot of patients down there and, and they all enjoy it. So hip replacement. When you fail all the conservative treatment, well then we talk about surgery. You know, hip replacement, it helps to relieve pain, restores mobility. This number is 260,000 from 2006. It's higher now. We're an aging population. So what is hip replacement? Well, this is the cup. It goes in that hip socket, which we showed you on the first picture. Then there's a liner. 
and there's different materials, okay? We've kind of gone full circle back to using a lot of the plastic or really hard polyethylene. Some of the real young patients will use ceramic heads. And then there's a stem. The stem goes down the middle of the bone. The bone's hollow, and that stem goes down there. And most of the time, the bone, we, we press fit it, and the bone grows into the stem. We also have bone cement. We don't like to fit, we can always put cement there to hold it in. So this is what it looks like here. Cup, this is an acetabulum. Here's the ball, here's that stem down the middle of the bone. So when should you have your hip replaced? Well, when it's affecting your activities. You have known arthritis, the arthritis is advanced, and you can't do what you want to do. And the medications and injections aren't working. Like I said before, we don't want you sitting around. It needs to be discussion between you and your physician on what's best for you. And you have to look at a number of things, the patient's health, their activity level, their expectations. And so we have those conversations with all our patients. There is no magic treatment for the cure of arthritis. You hear a lot of things out there, stem cells, oh, it's, but there's no really good studies that show that stem cells regenerate cartilage. When you come in with advanced arthritis, you're not a candidate for stem cells, okay? We've put them in, but I've reviewed all the literature. There's no good studies that show it works. Hip replacements. 90% of patients say they were able to resume the activities that they enjoy. 96% of the patients say they would do it again. And we talk about activity limitations. Well, golfing's fine. I let my patients play uh, doubles tennis, not singles, too active. And we want to preserve that joint. So I tell them, really, no running, no jumping, no yoga. I don't want you putting it at extremes of motion. Anything else is OK. So like I talked about, it depends on your age, your weight. It's easier for somebody that's more in shape. And that's why we send our patients to physical therapy, aquatic therapy, try to get you in shape. Even have you talk to a physical therapist who will do your therapy after a hip replacement. You know, with any surgery, there can be potential complications. So you try to limit those complications. Well, you make sure the patient's healthy. You make sure the surgery's done right. So minimally invasive, what is it? Oh, you know, it's, it's a big public relations, oh, it's so great. What it is, is it's the same procedure underneath the skin, okay? It's generally considered less than 10 to 15 centimeters, about six inches. I think it can be less painful, but the overall long-term results are the same as if somebody made a huge incision on you. So you have to be careful what you read about. So traditional surgery, well, like a 12-inch incision for a hip replacement. We don't do that anymore. We try to keep it 10 centimeters, 15 centimeters, but you've got to be able to see to put the component in right. And I'm going to talk about some newer technology that helps make sure that that component is imperfect, give you the best chance for success. Now, anterior approach total hip, what, what's the advantage, right? So there, there's different ways to put in a hip replacement. Do you put it from the front? Do you put it from the side? Do you put it from the back? What's my surgeon do? Why does he do it? You know, you need to be educated. So with an anterior approach, you work between the muscles. So you're not releasing muscles. You work between them and put the implant in. Well, posterior approach, lateral approach, you're, you're taking them down and sewing them back. So traditional surgery, you can lie on your side or on your stomach, get the surgery done. Like I said, you detach muscles. Most surgeons will get an x-ray after the surgery is done. The anterior approach, well, we use a special table called a HANA table. We've been doing this for approximately 10 years here at ETMC. And we were lucky enough to go get trained out in California with the guy that started it here in the United States. Well, no detachment of the muscles. There's studies out there that show it's a quicker recovery. Uh, some of our patients leave the next day and we're working on outpatient surgery where you can have the hip replacement go home the same day. So what are the benefits of going anterior? Well, less trauma, not detaching muscles. Smaller incision. And in, incision, it needs to be right for the patient and for the surgeon to feel comfortable. Our incisions are probably about like this, 10 centimeters. But it's a larger patient, generally a little larger incision. Smaller patient, smaller incision. You got to see. 
It's shown to be uh, less painful than other approaches. We get you up walking that same day, right? We inject a lot of numbing medication around your hip. Also, a really important thing is with the other approaches, well, there's restrictions on what you can do. You're not supposed to cross your legs for six weeks. You're not supposed to bend over and tie your shoes. So they don't want you bending over 90 degrees at the hip for six weeks. With an anterior approach, there's none of those restrictions. We'll let you cross your legs. We'll let you tie your shoes. Because we're not taking any muscles down. We're working between. Also, your chance of dislocation, bad thing. Nobody wants their hip to dislocate. Anterior approach is less than 1%. Posterior approach, some of the studies show it's up to 7%. So here's a, just an animation showing working between the muscles going anterior. So this is the front. The patient's laying flat, or the animation's laying flat. This is the bone, nerve and artery. This is your pelvis up here. These are retractors which we place. Here's the bone. The ball's up here. The socket's up here. And this is working between the muscles. These are retractors. Help us see what we need to see. This is the joint capsule. We're making a kind of a T-type incision in that capsule. We have to get down to the bone. This we call a little corkscrew. Kind of holds that ball. And most of the time you'll see big spurs coming off this. And that's from the arthritis, the wear and tear type of arthritis. That's our saw making the cut. This is called a little osteotome. And then we remove that ball and part of the neck there. Oh, what's the It's a lot of fun. <laughs> and here's the hip socket. These are retractors putting around the socket just so we can see. This is called a reamer. Well, we're going to make this the correct fit. And the back of that cup has porous coating. The bone grows into that. Here's a metal liner. Well, we've done one side. Now we have to do the other side. So here's the femur, your thigh bone. Well, like I said, bones are hollow. This is a real spongy bone here, but the rest of it's hollow. That's the canal. That's a rongeur, taking a little bone, to make sure it's going down the right way. These are called brooches. So we're going to broach and get the right fit. We want a tight fit so there's no, no wobbling. We want bone to grow into it. This is a trial neck. And here's the ball. And there's different sizes for all these things. If we want to lengthen it, well, longer neck. Make it more stable, bigger ball. With anterior approach, we have the x-ray machine in the room at the time of surgery, right? So we're able to judge. We, we can look and make sure we have the proper leg length. The last thing you want to do is come out one leg's longer than the other. So here's one of the x-rays we took during surgery just to make sure it's perfect. We look at here. It's called the lesser trochanter here, lesser, to make sure it lined up with the opposite hip. Then we'll take these trial components out, and then we put in the real stem and ball. So there's trials, make sure it's right, take those out, put the final implant in. Then we'll reduce the hip, and we use that special table, and it really helps get good exposure. This is a little hook that can attach to the table, kind of lifts the leg up and down if you need it. Then we're able to reduce the hip, but as you see in this, this procedure, we haven't taking down any tendons or muscle. We're working between them. So the success of total hip arthroplasty, well, you look at the health of the patient. All the patients require medical clearance. Your primary care physician or internal medicine doctor have to tell us you're safe for surgery. Your activity level, well, if you haven't done much before surgery, you know, and you're out of shape, well, it's going to take longer to recover in all likelihood. Osteoporosis, we look at patient's bone quality, the skill of the surgeon, you want to go to somebody that's experienced, done a lot of them, and then patient's compliance with the instructions. A lot of it is the physical therapy that's performed afterwards, working on regaining proper gait or the walking, building strength in your muscles. 
Now this is a newer thing that's really excited about. Well, we have the anterior approach total hip, which in my opinion, I think is the best way to go. Well, now we can add a robotic arm through an anterior approach. So not only the chance of dislocations less than the other approach, the recovery is shown to be quicker, but now we have precision too. We can make sure it's perfect. And so this is an x-ray we see before surgery. It's a CAT scan. You do need a CAT scan. But I was thinking about everybody's pelvis is a little different. So some people, when they walk, their pelvis is tilted over. Other people's tilted back. So the way to make sure those implants are in perfect is to get a CAT scan. Because you can look at the position of each separate implant. Well, if the implant's in perfect, well, chance of dislocation, a lot less. You have the muscles on the proper tension, well, muscles on the proper tension, your strength's increased. And it allows us to preoperatively plan it to make sure your leg lengths are right. Preparation, this is a picture that we see during the time of surgery, right? Well, we're orthopedic surgeons, you know, we're essentially just carpenters. We need something to guide us. Well, so I see the green. I burn the green off till I get to the white. I try to make it simple, but you can see these numbers on the side. Well, we've preoperative planned this. Where do we want to put that hip replacement? Well, we know where we want it to go, and this computer over here is telling us that we got it perfect. Providing a new level of accuracy and precision in total hip arthroplasty with the assistance of innovative robotic arm technology. Makoplasty Hip is a revolutionary surgical treatment option for adults needing total hip arthroplasty. RIO Robotic Arm Interactive Orthopedic System assists surgeons in achieving a new level of precision and more ideal hip implant positioning. Surgeons preoperatively plan each patient's makoplasty total hip procedure. The CT scan and RIO provide a three-dimensional view of the joint and diseased anatomy, enabling an optimized procedure plan, cup inclination, cup version, combined antiversion, and postoperative leg length are critical elements of total hip arthroplasty and are accurately planned for the individual patient preoperatively. During surgery, the patient's unique hip joint is registered and aligned to the preoperative plan. The surgeon plans and accurately defines the level of the femoral neck resection in order to achieve ideal leg length restoration. Once the head of the femur has been removed, the femoral That's a brooch going down. Using broaching instruments. The brooch tracker is applied on the taper of the trial femoral stem and femoral version is measured. Utilizing the femoral version the orientation of the acetabular cup can be intraoperatively adjusted to provide the optimal biomechanical reconstruction that is specific for each patient. During makoplasty, the RIO provides tactile feedback, 3D visualization, and auditory guidance as the surgeon prepares the acetabulum for the implant. The surgeon is assisted in providing accurate and controlled preparation of the acetabular bone to ensure the cup is placed according to the patient's unique surgical plan. The RIO assisted cup impaction step of the makoplasty procedure begins by easily switching from the acetabular reaming tool to the cup impactor. As the surgeon prepares to impact the implant into its final position, the RIO holds the acetabular cup at the desired inclination and version defined in the surgical plan. RIO also assists the surgeon in determining when the cup is fully seated. Surgeons can then evaluate the position of the implant and the postoperative leg length before leaving the operating room with a new level of confidence using robotic arm technology. So that was a guide, actual versus plan. So it tells you you got what you planned for. So the benefit, well, we get the leg lengths right. We know the position is correct using the robot and the computer because uh, every pelvis is a little bit different. Uh, and that can theoretically increase your motion in your hip and uh, improve your function too because your muscles are at the right tension. And make sure your leg lengths are the correct length. So this is just a little summary. We use a CAT scan and a computer to preoperatively plan it. We use the surgeon interactive robotic arm and then we use good implants. And then we try to get the best possible result for you. Thank you.